Hello lab mates, it's mailbag time, let's check it out, I've got some interesting stuff in here. Just some cables, these are 3.5mm cables, yeah 3.5mm to 3.5mm jack cables, just stereo ones, I don't know, what are they, 50cm long, something like that. does it say? No, I think they're 50cm anyway. The bidding series down below. I've actually been using these quite a bit on some of my projects and they work really well. I'm actually using them for a serial interface, believe it or not. Works fine, it's actually been fairly robust as well. You can see you've got this cloth sleeving on them and actually makes them a bit more wear resistant, I suppose, but they seem alright. I don't know how good the actual wires are inside, I've never cut one open, but uh, I haven't had one fail yet, so I haven't found a chance to find out. Make sure to subscribe if it's your first time here. Click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. And these are a bunch of ESP32 modules. Now these are the DevKit V1s. I've used these quite a bit. One of my more favourite devices. I've got the Pro Micros, Pro Minis, which I like, and these things. I like them because you can just interface them onto a board. You can make a circuit board and just plug them in. And I suspect I may actually be able to show you that soon, actually. Can I find a board? Here we go. Here's one of my existing boards. And you can see there's the footprint for it there. So you can just put the tape off that and you can drop that into the board if all the pins line up properly there we go kind of <laughs> it'll kind of go on the board so I actually normally use female headers on the boards there we go that's in all right so it stands off the board a bit as well that's in there kind of like that all right so that's the kind of thing I do um, but I have a female header so you can actually unplug them because sometimes when you're using certain pin combinations as outputs it can interfere with programming the device or even boot up or something like that. Sometimes you get some weird issues when it's restarting to do a program. So I always use a female header anyway to plug them in. But uh, yeah, that's the sort of thing I use them for is little projects like this because you can just program it, drop it onto a ball, and off you go. A bit of links on most of these items down below. Probably. Um, take a look anyway down in the description. And there's a couple more antenna. I've got some of these in the last one, I bag actually. These are 915 megahertz SMA connectors. So yeah, nothing too exciting there. Right angle ones. Not particularly exciting. These are used for LoRa and things like that, which use the IS inbound. But these are 915 megahertz apparently. I have to chat these in my little nano VNA and see what they resonate at in case they're actually not quite 915. Sometimes you never quite know, but the thing with these sorts of frequencies, anything near them even will affect the frequency resonance and stuff like that. So it affects the tuning and how they look. You know, if you have something close to it, like your hand, it will just throw it right off. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you like it. If you like watching Marbeg videos and you like the stuff I'm showing you, or if you see something you, you like the idea of buying, give us a thumbs up to show your appreciation. Also help support the channel. Ah, okay. These are some RTC modules. I've purchased a whole bunch of different ones. Um, this is the first lot that's arrived, even though I ordered them two months ago. So I take a cell here, which unfortunately is not included, but that's not unusual. Let's get a close up. There you go, it's an I2C RTC, so it's called the Tiny RTC. So they have a real time clock on there, 32 kilohertz crystal, I think it'll be, standard size. I think it takes a CR2032 battery. I'm not completely sure, because I'll find out. But I've never used these before, but I've got a project I want to put them on. I should be able to interface them okay, I hope so anyway. I think you can actually program the addresses on these as well. I'm not quite sure exactly how, but um, it looks like it's got. DS, SEO, SDA, this side, and over here you got, what's that? SQ, NS, SCL, SDA. But there's no information on these. I'm sure there's stuff on the internet I haven't actually bothered looking it up. Hmm. More research required, but links for these down below. If I find the right one, there's several I've purchased, so it might be linked to the wrong one, I don't know. Right, big box. I'm just trying to figure out where the opening point is because it's just completely wrapped in tape. Let's just go down and yeah, sharpen ram knife. <laughs> As you can tell. Ah, PCBs. Right, okay. And stencils. Well, at least one stencil. Yep, one stencil. A bunch more PCBs. So these are for actually two different projects. These aren't sponsored items, but they have been sponsored in the past, so I actually paid for these myself this time around. Shock horror. This board here is a replacement for one I designed a couple of years ago, or just about two years ago. Not well, about a year and a half, I suppose. So this is the original board here, and this is the one I've just designed. It 
it's say a bit smaller. All right, so it's a Laura's Wi Fi gateway, as you can see, and it's using USB 32. And it's basically got the same gear on it, except I've um, removed the need. I've got this programming header information here, so you can actually program the Laura modules in place. And really, I've only ever done it once, I didn't really need to do it. You know, you can do it other ways. I didn't really use this part that much. It had been handy a couple of times, but I've actually removed it because I didn't actually need it because I've redesigned it all the way it works. So I stripped all that off. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of pins down this side here as well now. That's because it now uses a TFT display. Now when I did this one, I was using an I2C display up here. And I kept quite versatile with headers and stuff like that, which I didn't actually really end up using. But now I'm just using a TFT display, which I've got here somewhere. I've got a broken one here somewhere. When I find it, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here's the broken TFT display, which I showed in the previous mail bag. had to be cracked for it. Um, and the idea of this is that I can piggyback them if I got it right, like that. And hopefully all the holes line up. They look to. So the idea is I'm going to piggyback it on the back of the display with some standoffs. That way I need one set of mountings. It's all nice and simple. No interconnect wires needed. It will just go straight on like that. I'll probably use a female header on this side so it stands off a bit. Then we can unplug it and, you know, if it's display fails or something like you can just unplug it and plug a new one in. If these fail, I don't know. I don't know the reliability of these things yet. Um, but yeah, just basically I did that to simplify connections and just to make it a bit simpler to deal with them. So that's that board. So you see me doing a project on this, maybe. I mean, I did do a feature of this board when I designed this one and, and covered this thing on, in, a, in a sponsorship. So I did actually feature this one as a project, Laura to Wi-Fi Gateway. I didn't go into the code too much, I don't think. Just the board and assembly of it, that sort of stuff. But so it's a new version. I might cover this one in a project, I'm not sure yet. Let's look at the other one. And this is the other board, which I've, you can see I've got a stack of these made. So I intend to sell some. These are my Datron projects. So this is the replacement display for the Datrons. I've done a few videos on it already on my main channel. This has got some improvements on it, just small ones. Fit a, fixed a couple of errors which were due to things being hard to read on the service manual. I had two connections backwards for the enunciators over here. I swapped those around on the prototype and that sorted that out. But um, I've rewired it over here. And also I had wrong footprints over here on these transistors as I found out. I used the wrong definition. So the pinout was incorrect, so I had to debug those parts in order to make that work. So this one's got all that fixed as well, so it's only, that's really hard to do with it. And also I put this white solder mask on there as well now. So this will be for my Datron, and hopefully these will be all good. I'm going to build one up, replace the prototype which is in my Datron here, see how that looks, make sure it looks okay. If that all goes well, then I shall sell these and make these available to people. I want so many, it's only going to be a limited quantity. I mean, I've got 25 here, so I'll order 25. So if I put one in my Datron, at least 24 available. I'll probably keep some for myself as well for future repairs. I will definitely be doing something with these. So these will be available. If you need one of these display modules to replace your broken display on the Datron 1062 or 1071, 1081, whatever, or even the calibrators, they use the same display, then let me know because I might be able to sell you one. They won't be cheap because of the component costs. The displays alone are like $4 each. So just that alone is expensive, plus the amount of development times that I put into it too. So that might be cheap, but it's better than throwing a piece of Hesky away. Yeah. And naturally the other thing I got here was a stencil for the Datron display board so I can stencil it and make them a bit more easily. It saves a lot of time. I got all this from PCBWay, so my usual supplier who do a lot of sponsorships on my channel. They've actually been very generous and given me some good sponsorship. And I've actually got a piece of test gear on its way to me, which hasn't arrived yet. It should be here. Well, it's been in the country since Monday. It should have been released since Monday, but I haven't arrived yet, so it's being a bit slow. But that should be here soon. That's a big chunk of piece of test gear because of PCB waste sponsorship, so it's been really helpful. Let's move on. Just a couple of raw antenna. These were 868 megahertz antennas, I think they were. Yes, there you go. Smart on the bottom. That's the model number, obviously. So those couple of little magnetic antennas. Yeah. I haven't actually really used them. I, got, I bought these thinking I might need them, and I'm not actually sure I'm going to need them now. I already have a couple. I thought I'd get a couple more. I think I need some external antennas on my motorhome for the event stuff we do. Then I've actually got those other antennas I showed uh, about a month or so ago in the mailbag. I've put those on there now, so I'm not sure I need these. I may need them for future stuff, but we'll see. Alright, let's see what's in here. Ah, 
Ah, okay, cool. Right. Not in quite the condition I'd hoped it would be in. Please be gentle with me, great. <laughs> there was no picture on this, so I'm, it's sight unseen. So front cover's basically naked. But so calibration handbook for the 1062, 1061A, 1061A. Now I've already got a book for the 1061, 1061A, but it doesn't cover the 1062. 1062 was added later on, so this should be a later revision of the book. Um, 1986 has got stated there. There's an Allen key in there. Interesting. Got some information in here. Service notes from somebody else. But I've got this because there are some differences between natural units and there are quite subtle differences in places and so I've actually noticed differences where I've been going through and checking a physical manual been going off that so I think I noticed in the calibration sequence on something one of the calibration sequences were different electronic manual for the 1062 this is one thing and the physical manual for the 1061 this is something slightly different there was some differences on there I think it was on the digital board um, which is where I really noticed that there's some quite big differences on there even though it's the same ball so yeah this is the 1062 manual Dated 1996, so it's a shame about it being in that bad condition though. Maybe I should laminate that and uh, punch it, put it back on. That'll resolve that problem. Right? Back cover's not much better. It's all it needs rebinding. It's a shame. It's got some extra notes in the back here. What's this? Amendment. Ooh, interesting. Oh, it's got some reading to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Catch you later.